What's up guys, Everything Apple Pro here, and I'm gonna be showing you some quick battery saving tips for iOS 9. So after updating iOS 9, all I'm hearing from other people is iOS 9 made my battery life so much worse and it's laggy and slow. So this video will help you fix both of those issues, but mostly I'm gonna be focusing on getting the most battery life out of your iOS 9 device. So first off, iOS 9 by itself introduces low power mode and on its own, it makes your battery life better by one hour. So as you guys know, all you need to do to enable low power mode is to go into the battery settings here and go ahead and enable it. So this will extend your battery life by four hours or at least up to four hours. And you know it's on when you have that little yellow battery. Oh, and I didn't know if you guys know this or not, so I wanted to mention it, but when you do enable low power mode, it actually limits CPU usage by up to 40%. So your performance will go down. You'll notice things will be a little bit laggier, but I guess it is worth the sacrifice when you really need it. So your performance will go down to that of an iPhone 5S. So just want you guys to be aware of that. I mean, I was surprised, why is my device so slow on low power mode? But then I did some research and found out. So besides this, what can you do to extend your battery? And surprisingly, there is so much. So I'm gonna be showing you everything I know about how to make your battery life better. Whether or not you wanna go ahead and enable these features or disable them, that's up to you because some of these do cripple your device a little bit, but I'm gonna be showing you from most extreme to least extreme right now. So first off, of course, low power mode, you can go ahead and enable that, but there's so much more you can do. So probably the biggest feature that has the biggest impact on battery life is the background app refresh. So this is where your background applications keep refreshing and they use your processing power and battery life to go ahead and do so. So if you don't need certain ones disable them, but I just keep it off because when I go into an application, I go there to refresh it, to check what's up. I don't always need these guys to be refreshing in the background. Next, I want you guys to go into your notifications and go on a diet here. Everything that you don't need, like Game Center. I haven't used this in years. I'm gonna go ahead and disable that. I don't know why tips is here. All of this stuff is just draining your battery life, giving you notifications you don't need. You know, So everything that you don't use, go ahead and turn it off. This helps with speed and battery life, believe it or not. So uh, yeah, go ahead and filter all of that. So next up, two of the biggest things, of course, is your display and the wireless. So let's go ahead and go into the display right here. First off, I want you guys to disable auto brightness. Usually I keep my brightness at about halfway. That's a good happy medium between too extreme down here and way too bright. Of course, it doesn't blind your eyes too. So around halfway, but I'm gonna, for the sake of this video, keep it right there. Auto brightness is good to turn off because it's not constantly adjusting to where you're at. Next is to go into your control center if this is on your way wasting a ton of battery life for no reason. Also, turn off Bluetooth and Wi-Fi when you don't need it, but use Wi-Fi when you're at home. If you don't have access to a battery charger, using Wi-Fi instead of LTE or data will extend your battery life greatly. And we're gonna go into the handoff and suggested apps. Now, if you don't have a Mac computer first off, your handoff should be off because the only reason you have it is to communicate with your Mac computer with an iPad and uh, you know pick up where you left off. Also, suggested apps, I would turn this off as well if you don't need it. What that is is basically on your lock screen, whenever you're near a Starbucks or Bank of America and you have that app on your device, it'll actually pop it up right here based on your location. You can slide up and open up in that application. I think it's a little bit pointless, but it could be convenient for some, so I prefer to keep that off. Next, let's go into the App Store and iTunes stores. In here, disable automatic updates. And if suggested apps is on, I would turn this off right here as well. So that way you'll save a lot of processing power by not running tasks in the background and battery life as well, and maybe even data. All right, next, let's go into settings settings and privacy, and there's quite a bit in here. But first off, let's start with motion and fitness. So if you guys don't care about fitness tracking whatsoever, you don't track it, your device is constantly using your data from the M8 coprocessor and uh, collecting it. So you can go ahead and disable all of that in here so it won't track your movement and stuff like that. Next, let's go into down here to advertising. So limit ad tracking. Not only does this help uh, limit the type of advertisements they place on your Safari web browser, it saves a little bit of battery life as well. Also go up here to location services and you can go ahead and turn off location services when you're not using it. But what I like to do is filter what I don't need over here. So things such as calendar, which I don't ever need with location services, you can disable it. For some, you can just enable it while you're actually in the app and you can go further into here and disable things that you don't need here. For instance, HomeKit, I never use that, so that's pointless. I don't use the compass, so I could disable that, and frequent locations. So this is actually something your iPhone does in the background. It 
tracks you. It saves all of your locations and frequent locations, and this helps with Siri proactivity. So if you disable this, Siri proactivity won't be as effective, but for me, I don't like being tracked and having all my movements tracked, so I'm gonna take that off, and uh, you know, just find everything that you don't need here and disable it. So next off, I want you guys to go into your iCloud settings. So wrong one, right here. So whichever one of these you don't use, I want you guys to turn it off. So for example, for me, if you don't sync calendars, that doesn't make sense for me to keep that on. So turn off calendar sync and uh, any other one that you don't sync with your iCloud account, turn it off because this is all battery life right here. Also iCloud keychain. Not only is this thing the most annoying when it comes to notifications, it keeps reminding me over and over and over again. I like to keep this off overall because I don't use it. And this does help with battery life just a little bit. All right, so for the last one in mail contacts and calendars, let's go ahead and disable push. So turn push off. So this means you'll have to manually go into the mail application to refresh for your mail. So that way it's not constantly searching. Of course, if you work at a very important job where you constantly need to check your email, don't do this. But for me, email is not that important. So it's just a waste of battery life to keep that on. So overall, these are the most effective things you can do to keep your battery life up. Now, this isn't where I'm gonna stop though. I'm gonna be showing you every little thing. What if you need that extra little bit of juice? You're out in the forest all alone and you just need that extra little bit of battery life. Well, I'm gonna be showing you the last few things that could extend your battery life by the few minutes when you need them the most. So first off, airplane mode. When you're not using it, when you don't have data, turn on airplane mode. It'll limit the cellular searching for service and communications and that will save some battery life as well. Also go into sounds right here and disable vibrate. So this will disable the vibration motor and you can turn sound off as well so that way it saves just every little bit of juice where it counts also we can go into privacy and go into here diagnostics and usage and don't send so this is again it's going to help with battery life just a little bit but it's not as much as you think so it doesn't push all the data to the developers in here of course make sure this is on also go into location services and just disable it altogether. All right, and then let's go into general accessibility. And there are two things here you can do to increase battery life. First off, increase contrast. So this will actually reduce transparency. It'll make your device a little bit faster, but it will look a little bit different. Things will be darker overall. Then let's go into reduce motion. And this will reduce that parallax effect on your home screen. So you'll no longer get fancy animations and stuff like that, but it will make your device a lot quicker. Also this one, I wouldn't really recommend, but if you you absolutely need to, you can disable Amber Alerts and Emergency Alerts down here so you won't get those pushed out to you and it will help just a little bit with battery life. And then we can go into General, Spotlight Search and disable Siri Suggestions and all of this stuff right here. So this will actually help a lot with the speed of your device and a little bit with the battery life. Again, this stuff is just extreme, you know, when you really, really need the battery life. Also, we can go down to Date and Time and disable set automatically. So this is now set manually. I wouldn't recommend this again if you do travel between time zones a lot. And there's just a couple other things. So when you actually have your device on your desk, you can actually help save battery life by keeping it face down just like that. When you get notifications, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but iOS 9 will not light up the screen when you have it face down because it uses the proximity sensor to tell because it's pointless. I mean, you won't be able to see it anyways, so it uses that as an advantage to the battery life. So that is a good one. Also, you guys can restart your phone at least once a day that does help to keep things running smoothly and the battery life as well. Also, I want you guys to go into settings, general, software update, and make sure to update because staying on the latest firmware does ensure you have all of the latest fixes and changes and software enhancements. So that way you'll get the latest battery enhancements as well. And iOS 9 is a great example of that. And one last thing is to let your battery die at least once a month all the way down. So let your iPhone shut down completely and charge it up to 100%. That's called battery reconditioning and it helps keep your battery in tip top shape to ensure maximum performance. So that's it guys. That is how to get the most battery life out of iOS 9. Of course, I showed you to the most extremes, but if you actually pick and choose which one you need in this video, you can get the most performance without crippling your device. And overall, I found that even without doing any of those, iOS 9 greatly improves the battery life and I was very happy with it iOS 9.1 is coming very soon and it will further help with speed and battery enhancements. I cannot wait for that. So thanks for watching this video. Hopefully I did help you preserve your battery life, maybe even save your life. You can thank me later. Have a great day guys. Enjoy the great battery life on iOS 9. Peace.